The e-commerce industry, conducting sales over the internet, has been growing at an exponential rate since it was first attempted in 1971. That growth has been fueled, in large part, by advances in computer technology. A modern e-commerce website not only provides immediate customer access to the company's entire product and service listing, it builds an evolving profile on each customer and presents highly customized recommendations and offers to customers that will drive continued sales. Serving and growing a global online customer base to grow your sales revenue is a natural fit for cloud deployments. But generating user profiles for highly effective marketing could expose sensitive data to nefarious actors. The best and most effective way to understand the relevant threats and necessary security mitigations associated with deploying cloud-based marketing recommendation service is to threat model the full environment with Threat Modeler, your AWS technology partner for threat modeling. As an AWS technology partner, Threat Modeler comes out of the box with a complete AWS component library with AWS specific threats and security requirements pre-mapped. For this video, we'll follow the suggested AWS reference architecture for an e-commerce website backend marketing and recommendation service. We'll start our threat model with a blank diagramming canvas. Our backend marketing service provides two functions. First, it will support front-end purchasing decisions by providing recommendations to users. So let's add a placeholder for the front-end website. Recommendations will be generated by an application. For now, we can use a placeholder. This app will be deployed on an Elastic Beanstalk instance. We can show this in Threat Modeler by including the app component in a container. Containers are a special type of group in Threat Modeler inasmuch as they are defined by an architectural component. To illustrate, with the app component selected, click Group in the Diagramming Toolbar. The default group type is a collection. We can change this by right-clicking the group and, from the pop-up menu, selecting Container. In the Container Definition dialog box, Type the name of the desired component and select it when it appears. User profiles will be generated by an Elastic MapReduce cluster. The EMRs will be deployed from a web server and the server will have access to an Elastic Block Store. And together, these will run from an EC2 service. The EMR will get raw data from the S3 bucket that was part of the website front end. Because it is our intention to nest this threat model, and because we don't want to arbitrarily duplicate identified threats, we'll use a generic database component on this diagram. Raw data for the EMR analysis will also come from the read-only slave database that was included as part of the back-end checkout service threat model. Since that threat model will also be nested in the website front end threat model, we'll again include generic placeholders here. The second function that our backend marketing and recommendation service provides is generating and managing a highly customized drip email campaign. The campaign will be managed by a marketing management application. Again, this app can be deployed from an Elastic Beanstalk service. Emails will be sent via an AWS simple email service. The marketing app will be managed by a marketing manager. And for completeness, we should add a component for the email recipients. Now, with all the architectural components and groups on the diagramming canvas, the next step is to add the appropriate communication links. This is very easy to do in Threat Modeler. Simply click on a components icon and draw an arrow to another icon. When the click is released, Threat Modeler automatically adds a communication link. The default protocol is HTTPS. We can change this by right-clicking the link and, from the pop-up checkbox, selecting the desired protocols and deselecting any protocols we don't want. Inasmuch as this is a threat model for a cloud-based service, we'll use the default protocol for the remaining links. The final step in creating a threat model is to add additional properties to select components as needed. For example, we know that the SES will handle emails. We should therefore add a component and data elements for these. Click the Add button in the Information pane, select Data Elements, in the dialog field select Emails. Again, click the Add button, 
and this time select Components. In the Component field, select Email. Our EMR will be processing sensitive data. We should therefore add those data elements which may be used to generate a user profile. Our Dynamo database will contain user profiles, so let's add the appropriate data elements for that. And our Marketing app and Recommendations app will draw from user profiles to complete their functions, so let's add the appropriate properties to these. We'll also want to include properties in the Marketing app relevant to the login feature through which the Marketing Manager will authenticate for access. And that's it! Our threat model for the e-commerce marketing and recommendation service is now complete. By navigating to the overview page, we can see that threat model has automatically identified 46 threats and 130 mitigating security requirements. By opening a threat group, we can get more information about the threat's source, statuses, and risks. By clicking on an individual threat, we can get detailed information on that threat, including any relevant threat intelligence. Since we already created the e-commerce website front-end threat model, we can replace the placeholder component in favor of the nested threat model. And we can import the threats from the front-end website threat model. Now going back to the overview page, we can see that threat model has automatically included the 18 threats from the nested front-end website threat model in our list of identified threats. It took me, a non-security expert, about 15 minutes to create the threat model for our AWS e-commerce marketing and recommendation service in Threat Modeler. If you would like to learn more about threat modeling your AWS deployments, please visit us on the web at www.threatmodeler.com. And while you're there, be sure to schedule a live presentation. And of course, please take a moment to subscribe to the Threat Modeler YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.